While all four Gospels tell the story of Jesus, each of the evangelists have their own style, their own way of telling that story. Between Matthew, Mark and Luke, there's a great deal of similarity. But John writes in a very different way to the others. In John's Gospel, there are no parables, there are no scribes and Sadducees. There are far fewer accounts of Jesus healing the sick. John's is the Gospel of Signs, the value of which John teases out with long reflections, either by Jesus or John himself. Last weekend we celebrated the Feast of the Baptism of Jesus. We marked how it was a significant moment for the evangelists, that it marked the beginning of Jesus' public life. And while that's true for the Gospels of Matthew, Mark and Luke, it's not so for John. In John's Gospel, Jesus begins his public life, not with his baptism, but at a wedding. There was a wedding at Cana in Galilee. The mother of Jesus was there, and Jesus and his disciples had also been invited. We have no more wine. I must see my son. When they ran out of wine, since the wine provided for the wedding was all finished, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no more wine. Jesus said, What wilt thou have me to do for thee, that will I do? For my now is not yet come. His mother said to the servants, Whatsoever he saith unto you, see that ye do it. There were six stone water jars standing there, meant for the ablutions that are customary among the Jews. Each could hold twenty or thirty gallons. Gather the water vessels and fill them. Fill them. With water. The steward tasted the water and it had turned into wine. Having no idea where it came from, only the servants who had drawn the water knew. The steward called the bridegroom and said, This is the first wedding feast I have ever attended, where the best of the wine has been saved for last. This was the first of the signs given by Jesus. It was given at Cana in Galilee. He let his glory be seen, and his disciples believed in him. As is always the case in John's Gospel, his description is rich in symbolism. Throughout the Old Testament, a wedding is often used as a symbol of God's relationship with his people, as it is in today's first reading. The wedding feast at Cana, for John therefore, sets the contact for what Jesus does. This is all about God's relationship with his people. And Jesus is the central character who reveals the true nature of that relationship. Wine too has great symbolic value for John. The rabbis had a saying that I love, without wine there is no joy. And the wine for the wedding had run out. The joy had run out in the people's relationship with God. Those responsible for preserving that relationship were failing. The old ways were failing. But Jesus produces more wine, new wine, an excess of wine, 180 gallons. 
That's a lot of joy. Although John knew of Jesus' baptism and of its significance, for John, it's the changing of water into wine at the wedding that is the first great sign of what Jesus is setting out to do. A new relationship with God and to restore the joy that is proper to that relationship. Everybody knows that Jesus turned water into wine at Cana. But did he? Did Jesus do anything? It was the servants who drew the water. It was the servants who took the wine to the steward. And they did all that because Mary had told them to. Do whatever he tells you. And I think it's the key to finding joy in our relationship with God. Trust. Mary trusted in her son, as did the servants. They did what Jesus asked of them, even though it didn't really make much sense. But their trust was rewarded in the joy of the new wine. As John has Jesus begin his public ministry at the wedding feast at Cana, he invites us to recognize those signs that confirm Jesus as God's anointed and to therefore believe in him and so come to know the joy God intends us to discover in doing that all Jesus asks of us. If you remember only one thing from the story of the wedding feast at Cana, maybe it should be this, that without wine, there is no joy, but that it is Jesus who provides that wine.